Yeah, it's probably important when you talk about the Timber and Heritage Park that we understand the work that Alex Jones did there. He's affectionately known as Jonah, local fellow, and uh, he probably was instrumental in that park being retained as natural bushland. He had a wildlife sanctuary there for a number of years. And I'd like to think that if he hadn't done that, the land could well have been lost to housing or some other commercial development. So I think we need to remember that what, how important it was that we had that wildlife sanctuary there, which it was, of course, a tourist attraction in its own right, but did save that, that bit of forest from perhaps being used for something else. So. Well, the history of the Timber Park, it started as an animal wildlife sanctuary, and the owner then was Alec Jones. It's always been a, a crown lease. When he closed the park down, he bequeathed the park to the community for future um, community purposes. Yeah, it was quite a, a beautiful park in fact, but uh, he spent a lot of time there and had a number of volunteers as well, but uh, that really is so important in the future of that park and I think we can say a big vote of thanks to Alex in fact for the work that he did there. State Timber Museum in Western Australia was opened and that's designed to, to look like a stand of carry trees. This is the Timber Museum within the Timber Park. Um, it is unique in that it um, represents a stand of carry trees. The museum itself was built in uh, with federal and state government money um, in the mid-1970s uh, and the WA Museum um, assisted with the uh, displays within the, uh, the Timber Museum itself. Um, it has always been a Shire owned facility um, and the WA Museum only provided support um, in the uh, initial setup of displays. This display is in relation to forest management, um, how the forests have been managed over time. In front of me are examples of some of the uh, timbers that are found in the local area, uh, all of about 20 years old. This display is part of the uh, history of the timber industry. Um, in this section we've got the mill and uh, the uses of timber. We have uh, some representation of uh, log hauling in this area, tree felling in the 1920s and uh, tree felling in uh, the pre-19th century. Again, the hamlet um, was uh, developed as part of the Mejimup uh, Visitor Centre uh, promotion for the Greater um, um, Timber Park. Most of the buildings have been donated um, by uh, groups, organisations um, around the South West, uh, Forest Department, Bunnings and uh, the like. And they've been set up, uh, the displays inside have been set up by the Historical Society uh, depicting um, objects and artefacts and scenes uh, found during the uh, 1930s to 1950s, um, a lot of which would, would have been um, um, used at, uh, in the management period. The building is the headquarters of the Manjimup Historical Society. Um, it was a police station that was built around 1912 and used to be situated on the northern end of Manjima. As part of the um, establishment of the timber park, uh, they moved all the buildings within the hamlet um, down to this uh, location and most of them are set up as displays. 
Uh, there's a range of years, um, uh, a couple in 1912, 1914 era, um, others are in the 1920s um, and even to the 1930s. Uh, many of them were used uh, from uh, when they were built to the 1950s, 60s and even into the 1970s. It's not just a vital piece of heritage, it really is an example of what volunteers can do. The park, the Shire sustains the caretaker and the basic maintenance through our rates, but most of the work, that hands-on work in the park is the community. The Friends of the Timber Park, the Historic Society, all the other industry groups and that. So it's a really good example of that and I think if we, to lose the park would be losing so much more than just our heritage and I think that's where, where the ownership is there. The Historical Society um, collects and uh, records, etc., um, a whole heap of uh, histories in relation to the uh, Manjima area. Um, in our headquarters we have uh, archives, uh, which is um, paper-based uh, material. We have photos, like some of the ones that I'm uh, looking at at the moment, that uh, the Tourist Bureau have uh, kindly um, allowed us to use. There's different photos uh, from uh, times gone by, really interesting history. There was a um, photographer in Manjima who came here in the um, early 1950s, uh, worked in the rail industry, worked in the tin industry and then uh, decided to uh, go out as a uh, photographer uh, by the name of John Stewart. Um, he um, copied photos that were brought to him and uh, this is a selection of uh, some of his photos. A few years ago when there was talk about what to do with the park because there was concern about growing cost of maintaining it, the community through a series of consultations and, and everything made it very clear that that's their park and they will not see it disappear or go elsewhere. In terms of the Timber and Heritage Park, I mean, that's an absolute asset to our town. It's probably the most significant tourism icon that we have uh, in the Manjimup town site. And I know it's well visited, it's well loved even by locals and, and local families. So something that needs to be, again, nurtured and hopefully the, those that fund that facility, including the Shire, continue to support it in a big way. My opinion of the park is that it is a really, really valuable piece of our heritage. It encompasses all the significant components of our Shire and where it's come from. It's a really great um, area for locals as well as uh, visitors to come and learn stories about the Manjimup area, not only the timber but uh, agricultural and other industries um, in the area and uh, it's a great place to uh, just come and um, uh, kick back, let your hair down, kick a footy around. Um, and then potentially uh, pick up um, some of our local histories and stories. It's certainly important and should be encouraged and, and grown at any opportunity. And everyone walks away with that feeling of this is just an amazing place, and it really is. And I, I think that's pretty well cemented in our community. So that's probably how, I, you know, I, I love the place. I uh, just hope you enjoy your uh, time in the park. Enjoy the sunshine that um, is appearing outside today and uh, enjoy the history.
Station here, as you can see. Well, this is my my rail. I always say this is the most important tool. If you can do a great job with minimum amount of tooling, it's great. You can use your noodle. Now, anybody to come here has to ask my permission. This is my place. Because now they don't have to do play with the real things. They want to play computer games. So there you have it. It's comprised of an anvil, okay, which is this. All right. But here I play with the real things. Very straight. Called the king of all tools because everything we got now is made out of metal, you know, or things of wood or plastic need metal to be fashioned. It started here, and the prince of all tools, the hammer. Okay, the forge fire. It's got a canopy over, so such are the fumes. It can be bellows, old days, or modern blower. Modern blower uh, is good, cuts down the you know the hard yucca because metal is hot. Obviously, you can't hold it with your bare hands. Okay, now. And the uh, leg vise. This is a late tradition, which is a swage block. The blacksmith has always been a master of the four elements. Earth, comes from Mother Earth. You got a wind, air, then you got a fire here, then you got a water for quenching. Did you get my golden tooth? <laughs> the snarl of the beast is a golden tooth. Okay. Earth, water, wind, Hey, that's it. No other tradesman walks through all the four elements at once, but me. No, because this is a this is a timber you know town. Now, in every even the smallest uh, you know all days up at the Second World War, even any shipping vessel is to have a blacksmith on board. But here I play with the real things, from whaling ship, commercial, fighting vessel. In the timber industry, they always had a blacksmith shop somewhere on the side because they needed things to be done and it could only be made in metal. Agricultural implements. Tools for other trades. Uh, it might look like a, uh, like a Jewish uh, in a menorah, men, men, menorah, menorah, you know, but it's not really. And utensils. Uh, all days, so many segments, they're riveted. A fry pan, you can do your big, you know, pot. He's the only one tradesman that can make his own tools. You can do a ladle, you can do you a... Uh, I can make all my tools if I got bigger tools to make them. You can make chains, you can make axes, you can make knives, you can make swords. Bloody dies and swages and odd tools and uh, uh, interesting other different hammers or tongs or, you know, da -da -da, like I got here on the floor. It can make you something ornamental, you know, to warm, warm up the cockle of your heart or like I got there. Now, what else? Uh, incidentally, this is the uh, this is the infamous you know side sword of my ancestors. Okay, this to punish the Romans. Now, I can also make swords. Do it, do it, do it. Get a close up on that too. <laughs> Go on, get a close up. Back in old country, Romania. Get a close up, Zing. nice and tight. <laughs> nice and tight. Devastating. The edge on the outside here, the edge on the inside. Wow, I'm not many places got a timber block like this. Awesome. I'm part of this, you know, outfit now, and uh, people actually they are very happy to see something like this. And so kind of kind of go back in time, and uh, nobody can say that he did not pass the blacksmith shop and stop. Then he hasn't been talked to, talk to his head off sometimes, you know, <laughs> and give him a bit of an insight in the history of you know blacksmithing or weapons or tools or how they were made and steels and all these things. So I think it is pretty good. George. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, man. Right. Ciao. So, uh, what else do you want to know, lads? <laughs>